Welcome back to another episode of Matt Break Studio. We're looking at motion and lighting effects, particularly like oh, gobos. <laughs> yes, gobos indeed. Gobo. Gobos indeed. So what is a gobo? Yeah, what is a gobo? Yeah, so it's a new can, camera. If, so gobos are frequently used in stage lighting right. where you slip some kind of filter or something that blocks part of the light so you see a nice pattern on the stage. Right. Um, now Hitchcock used to do that all the time, gobos, and he'd you know put like lead patterns on walls yeah. and yeah, way of blocking yeah. light, creating instant yeah. patterns. If you look yeah. up what is a gobo on uh, Google, you'll get a lot of things. Here's just some images. There's uh -huh. an example of a gobo being slipped into a light, uh, and some examples you know used at weddings and things like that, but used in many many different ways. So the question was posed to me: Can you do a gobo in motion? Nice. Yeah. So here's the idea. So I have a little setup here where I have some text on a floor with a light. And what I'm gonna do is, and the light's set to cast shadow. So I'm gonna actually back up so we see there's the light right there. What a nice hot spot. Very bright hot spot, but we're not gonna worry about that right now because <laughs> we'll fix that. But you can just see there's, I've got a light, a spotlight set up that's pointed down on that text. So the idea of a gobo is that you take something, it's usually a disc with some cut out on it right. and put in front of the light. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Nice. We're, we're gonna build our own. You can download, you can use any image to do this. You can make your own images in Photoshop or whatever. It can just be black and white or it can have transparency. So, but the example, what I'm gonna do here is I've created a group here called Gobo, which is just an empty group. And um, because I'm 3D space, things can get a little confusing about where you are in 3D space, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna reset this to zero, 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 so that gobo group is at the center of the composition. And then I'm gonna click this little, this button here that shows up on a 3D group is called the isolate button. If I click that, we're only looking at this group and nothing else, and it's front and center, so we can really work on it. So from there, it's empty right now, I'm gonna go to the library, to generators, and in the generators category, I'm just gonna throw a color solid in there because that's gonna be my gobo. I'll press shift, shift Z to fit it to the window. That's the thing that I now want to cut out. Right. Cut out a pattern. Is there a reason it's blue, or just that's what it is? The background. That's the default color of a of a um, color so solid. Let's if you know you don't like that, we can let, let me just make it like a gray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Feeling like better. Blue. Yeah, I was bugging, better. Okay. bugging me. I don't know. It's not a very exciting gray. Mm -hmm. But so now the cut it out. I'm going to use a replicator to do this. So I'm going to hit C for the circle tool, and make a little circle, escape L for a replicator, and in the inspector I'm going to change the replicator shape to a circle. I'm going to make it pretty big and I'll quickly go to the properties and reset the properties just to center it. Then I'll go back to the replicator tab and make that radius a little bigger. And then I don't want this nice simple pattern here. Instead of a tile fit, I'm going to choose a tile fill. I'm going to choose random fill and give it a bunch more points. And I can also change the scale of those points, scale randomness. I'll crank up the scale randomness so we have different size points. So this is just an example of what you could do. Okay, Amoeba. a bunch of kind of random, random, random pattern here yeah. to put in there. Uh -huh. So now that I've done that, I want this replicator to mask this color solid. I want it to use it to cut this out of the color solid. <clears throat> so under the object menu, I'll choose add image mask to apply an image mask to the color solid. In the heads up display, I F7. knew that'd be an image well. Yep, an image well. <laughs> you did, you're right on it, you're right on it. Image well, in fact, but I'm gonna get rid of that. You don't actually have to drag anything to image well. So a little tip here, I'm gonna take that replicator and drag it right onto the image mask itself. And it's now cut holes, it's actually masked our color solid, but it's done the opposite of what we want because it's, it's basically put solid. If I hit Shift T for transparency, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's not what I want. I want the opposite, so I'm gonna invert the mask in the heads-up display here. There you go. That's what I want. There's your gobo. There's it's like my a gobo. Little, it's like a little black card that you punch yep. holes through. That's exactly. fantastic. That's my gobo. So Shift C, just go back to color. Fantastic. And now I'm gonna close this group and I'm gonna unisolate it. I don't know if unisolate's a word, but that brings it back. So now I wanna move this guy Actually, I'll open back up again. I want to take that color solid and move it in front of the light. So I'm going to give you another little tip here. I just pressed the Q key so we could see. We could try to move it by hand and drag it over there and, and get it in position. And we could get pretty close to doing that. You can already see how the light is being thrown through it, right? Right. But a little bit easier way to deal with this is if I select the light and go to the properties inspector, I'm going to take its position and rotation by dragging the word transform and drag that word transform right onto the color solid. So it in, that solid inherits the light position? And rotation, nice. yeah. So we can see it's now exactly jammed against the light. So I'm gonna move it back from the light a little bit. 
um, I'm, I'm selecting the light, sorry. Got to select the color solid. It's in the same exact place and back it out from the light. And, oops, you know why that did that is because I've got the, um, uh, how can I say this? I have the um, pattern, the replicator is still back there. And you can't move a whole group in that way. So you can move one object at a time that way. So what I would need to do is move, move each object. So um, sorry, instead of that, I am just going to go ahead and drag it. But you can, you can match an object to another object, but you can't match a whole group. So I'm just going to drag the whole thing up here. That works. And get it. That works. Gets me kind of where I want to go. Yeah. And from that point, obviously, I don't want that in the scene. So I'd, I'd come in closer so the light's not actually in the scene. And what I probably do is move the whole thing further away. This is them you want the light to be quite far away, and to have this whole gobo group also be quite far away, so it's not in the shot. Move it up a little bit so we can see it there, so that we can come closer. Now I'm going to stay back for a minute because the next thing is I want this thing to move. So what I'm going to do is select this color solid, and in the properties inspector, I want to rotate it around the z-axis, so it has a little movement with a rotation. In fact, I want to rotate the, the replicator on it. Let's find it and rotate it. So I want to get that little action of as if the gobo were moving, because right. frequently you want them to move. So to do that, I'll use the parameter behavior by control clicking on rotation for Z and choose add parameter behavior. I'll add a rate parameter behavior. And I'll just crank up the rate amount. That's quite a bit faster than I want, maybe more like five. It's just a slow movement across those letters, maybe a little higher, 15. Or that could have been a wood okay. dance floor, and you've got the like the dancing. Yeah, you're letting the, the ball, dance floor. Right. Yeah, and this object can be any kind of object that you're using there. Um, you can put any kind of artwork in here, and the mask, instead of being transparency, if I select the mask again, you can choose uh, luminance. So you take a black and white image, and it'll work on a black and white image. So you can really use anything you want to throw shadows and patterns of light onto a 3D scene in motion. Let's just go back here and color the light to make it look a little more interesting. Lights can be any color. I'll maybe give it like a nice blue mm. look. And then I can zoom in closer on my text. I've got a nice big floor there and we can see the lights moving across the text and slowly revealing it. Then you can adjust to see where you want to move it to. But that's a basic idea where you can use any kind of uh, image, uh, black and white or with transparency as a gobo in motion. Wow. All right. Well, cool. So try this at home, <laughs> right? Make a gobo, and uh, you'll be making really cool patterns on your subjects. So if you want to learn more about motion, check out Mark's amazing 17-hour uh, tome on learning motion. And uh, check us out on twi uh, Twitter, Facebook. <laughs> and we have excellent YouTube channel on Motion. He's got some amazing under motion magic under fives you want to check out. And as I said earlier, um, if you have any specific things you'd like to see, feel free to post those things on Twitter or our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. We'll see you next week.